What's up guys, welcome back to Airbnb ABCs where we talk about all things short-term rentals, Airbnbs, VRBOs. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you're brand new here, hit that subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell, hit the like button that helps this video move forward in the YouTube algorithm. Because today we are talking about Airbnb versus VRBO. When you get your half million dollar, million dollar place and you're ready to put it up on the internet for everyone to see and look at, you're gonna hear a lot of different things about Airbnb, VRBO, and then some other lesser known uh, platforms such as like booking.com or things like that. If you are around for more than five minutes, you'll hear that essentially Airbnb and VRBO are the short-term listing agencies to use and then maybe a direct booking website if you are into building that out and trying to get your own bookings directly uh, from the source. And so today we're just gonna compare the pros and cons and kind of the experience that I've had in the uh, collective experience I've had from working and networking with thousands of different uh, owners on Airbnb and VRBO. And first up, we are going to start with Airbnb. Now, Airbnb is, it's the new thing. It is the industry standard as well. And with Airbnb, they have become the, the thing that you say when you're talking about a short-term rental. They're essentially like Kleenex or Coca-Cola. You go to look for an Airbnb if you are not going to stay at a hotel. Even if you're looking on VRBO, a lot of times people will say, I'm going to go look for an Airbnb on VRBO. And the reasons are, are multiple, but the biggest thing is that it has been super easy to use and it had, they've done a very good job of marketing. And so what we're gonna look at with these two things is the uh, the fees that, that they charge, because this is going to be the things that really take away from your bottom line. And you know we're all in this to make some money. And so that should be pretty important to you. How easy it is for their website and their app to use for you and for the guests to navigate through. The type of uh, guests that you end up getting through these things Things, and then the different coverages that Airbnb and VRBO have because that is actually one of the bigger areas where they differ. But let's start off with the fees. If you guys are listing on Airbnb, the fees to the host are pretty reasonable. You are only going to get charged 3% of the entire booking. And what that is, is your entire nightly rate, so that all of your nights added together, plus your cleaning fee, the, the Airbnb is going to take 3% of that. Airbnb claims that they don't charge anything for payment processing, but obviously that has to be paid for somewhere. So somewhere between the fee that you pay and the fee that the guests pay is where that ends up getting taken out of. Now on that subject, the guests end up, ends up paying 14% of that total booking. And this is where guests and such can get uh, a little aggravated as far as, you know, when you look at the nightly rate and then you add the cleaning fee and then you add the guest fee and then you add taxes that have to be paid to state and local governments, the amount that is end up charged to their credit card ends up being a lot more than just whatever the nightly rate is times however many nights that you have. There have been some uh, pushes from Airbnb to try to change this so that the amount listed either on the map or in their search results more accurately reflects what the total amount is going to be. But there has been some pushback from, from hosts and a lot of, and some people just like that itemized type of thing where this is the room rate, this is your cleaning fee, taxes and platform fees. But for the time being, this is the way it is and Airbnb ends up taking about 70% all together with 3% from you and 14% from the guests. Now, when you look at their website in their app, you can tell that Airbnb is really a technology company first and a hospitality, uh, real estate investment uh, type of company secondary. And that is, that is actually a very good thing because what you're looking for in these platforms is a very easy user interface for people to find your place, book it for you to uh, run financial reports out of, see how many views you're getting, and just any type of information that you want to, to get easily off of any piece of tech, you know how frustrating it is when things don't work exactly right on these items that are supposed to make our lives easier and better and then you just have to fight with them. I can tell you that Airbnb's website and app work very well. If you do something to your property, you change the pictures, you change rates, you change wording or whatever, it almost instantaneously updates. Everything just works very well. Even getting in contact with customer service is a very easy thing. You can do so through their chat stuff. You can do so through their customer service line. It's very easy. And again, this is obviously where Airbnb excels in their user interface. It, they're, 
they're a tech company and so they do tech very well. Now the guests that you end up getting from Airbnb, they have a, uh, a history of being worse guests than VRBO. And I do believe that this is probably undeserved and probably relates to when Airbnb was very new. Uh, the stays were very cheap and uh, you did a lot of room sharing and stuff versus now where it seems like a, a lot of Airbnbs are renting entire houses, entire townhomes, entire uh, condos. But with Airbnb being a very new platform and kind of being the hip thing to do, it does invite somewhat of a younger crowd that may be more likely to be, you know, louder, uh, cause property damage, and maybe just be a little bit more carefree and perhaps care less and maybe cause a problem. The good news is from my experience, uh, Airbnb guests have been great overall. We haven't had any particular problems that I can say is a uh, ongoing trend with Airbnb guests. And if you do run into a problem, Airbnb uh, offers what they call air cover. And this is where you have $1 million of coverage for damages that happen to your property, such as a couch getting ruined, uh, a door getting broken, uh, pet, pets being let into a non-pet friendly uh, rental, deep cleanings that, that aren't you know normally scheduled, as well as a million dollars in liability. However, there has been a, a historical uh, kind of trend for Airbnb to typically side with guests. If you say they did something, the guests said they didn't, oftentimes Airbnb will side with the guests. This new air cover, which has only been in effect for a couple months, promises from Airbnb to be more host friendly, to pay out more and to pay out quicker. So it is kind of going to be a wait and see type of thing uh, for that. So next up is VRBO. And this is the old guard. VRBO started way back in 1995, ancient history. And it basically started up as almost like a forum, like a bulletin board service for folks that have their own places to list them on and for people to rent. Now there was still always uh, management companies that you could book a cabin or a beach property with or hotels that you could use, but this was kind of the start of the uh, vacation rental by owner, which is what VRBO originally stood for, even though some people might think that it stands for vacation rentals by the ocean. That is what it originally stands for was by owner. And so you can tell that it is still sort of a company and a listing agency that is stuck in the past. And it is obviously not a tech company when you get into it. And we will get into that in just a minute. But for the fees for being on VRBO, you are going to look from a host perspective of a 5% service fee on your bookings. And this is gonna entail the same thing as Airbnb where it is your nightly rate plus your cleaning fee. They're gonna take 5% just as a service fee. In addition to that, they are going to take 3% as a uh, credit card processing fee. So you're looking at 8% off of your end, which is more than double what Airbnb charges to the host. That's something to consider. The guest is going to pay anywhere from six to 12%. And I was not really able to find anything that says exactly how they come up with where they charge you between six and 12%. But when I looked through a few of my bookings, did the math, uh, I see around 11% is what they are charging the guests. And then uh, obviously there's the same taxes and fees that state and local government government's charge, but just in the service fees and credit card processing fees, the VRBO charges, the host and the guest, you're looking at about 19% total, which is about two more percent than Airbnb. And so that is going to end up impacting your bottom line. Overall, uh, VRBO is a little bit more expensive and, you know, like again, it's going to put less money in your pocket. Now, when you're looking at your their website in their app, this is where VRBO is definitely behind Airbnb. Their websites and their app are are just not easy to navigate. They're not horribly hard, but it's just not as slick. It's not as well put together as Airbnb. And I don't know if they're still just operating on Windows 95 or what, but they need to get someone in there that uh, can really brighten up their website and, and streamline it. Because when you make changes, remember what I said with Airbnb, it was very quick. When you make changes on VRBO, it can take hours or days for those things to propagate through their system and appear on the user end uh, for them to view. It also, in my uh, experience, trying to browse through the map, trying to search for properties, 
I end up running into a lot of issues where the map will just suddenly move or I'll put in something, I'll click on something, it'll glitch and go back to something else. And it's just not the easiest uh, way to find properties to search. And if you are a host that has something listed on there, it will be harder for people to find your place on VRBO. In addition to all of that, if you're a host, the payments are much slower from VRBO than they are Airbnb. In general, Airbnb pays you the next day after somebody checks in. On VRBO, it's usually the next day after somebody checks in, but it could possibly be the day after that or even the day after that. And so, if you're not struggling for money, if you're not in any type of a cash crunch, it's not that big of a deal, but it is a slower payment system. With your first payment from VRBO, it can take up to 30 days from when your first guest checks in until you receive that payment in your bank account. And so that can be quite an inconvenience. But the upside is that in general, the, uh, the, the going thought is that guests via VRBO are better guests. And again, this may be an unfair assessment. Uh, what I have found is with a VRBO guests, they are typically older guests and, uh, you know, because this started back in 1995. So if you were in your 18 to 25 years old back in 1995, uh, you know, you're going to just be an older uh, guest and there's usually less uh, major parties making noise, causing disturbances as folks get older. I know that I am less rowdy now at 38 than I was when I was 22. And so I just think that that is the way to go. What I have found with these uh, with these older guests on VRBO is a lot of them are expecting more of a hotel experience than the Airbnb. So if there's like something minor that's wrong with the, with the cabin, such as maybe a light bulb is out or some other very minor thing that doesn't uh, impact their stay hardly at all, they will be more apt to ask for that to be fixed immediately and just generally have a more of, like I said, a hotel experience where you would have staff on site that could take care of any given problem at any given time. So the question is, which one is better? Which one should you list your property on? Which one should you try to get most of your business through? And what I'm gonna tell you is, neither is any better in any way than the other ones. The Any type of weakness that one has, kind of the other has some strength that balances it out. And what I've always said with, with any type of investing or something where you're marketing yourself, which is what you are doing with any of these, uh, because this is really a hospitable uh, or a hospitality business versus a pure real estate investment business, is try to cast the widest net that you can. I haven't had any real problems with any guests that I've had from VRBO or Airbnb up to this point. So I don't really see the, any difference in the guests. I don't really notice the difference in the uh, in the percentages that the platforms take. And so I can recommend these uh, both of these platforms very well to anyone. The only thing that I can see is sort of a negative for VRBO is that they do not have the sort of robust protections that Airbnb uh, has for their uh, hosts. VRBO does have $1 million of liability protection, but they do not have anything where they say that they will protect you from damages, such as people bringing pets in, uh, property damage of any type. You can add on uh, insurance policies that the guests can pay for, but then again, that's another $50 to $100 out of their pocket that they're not getting back. You can also put in a security deposit, but again, that might only be up to three to $500. So if they do damage a couch, a commercial couch for one of these uh, short-term rentals can be anywhere from $2,000 to $3,000, and that may not, uh, come you know cover that cost whatsoever when you're looking to list your places on vrbo or airbnb i recommend doing both of them uh, be sure to do your research be sure to know what you're getting into uh, before you guys list on these so that you are fully educated and you know you know all the pros and cons of each I want you guys to click on these videos on the screen right now. They're going to tell you all about our VRBO Airbnb business. They're going to tell you about our cabins, how we run them, how we manage them from a distance. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put out on this channel for short-term rentals. I appreciate you guys watching today, and I'll see you in the next one.